If you're considering selling, you know, products or services, you're trying to sell your idea, you're trying to sell yourself, you're even in an, an interview, you know, when you're talking to someone, the most important thing first is to try to figure out how aware are they of the real problem that I even solve through my product or my programming or my services. If they're not even aware, then actually the way that you sell your idea to them is you have to teach them about the problem. Have you ever tried to convince someone as a programmer how valuable your skills are, but they just don't seem to care? Or maybe you've tried to sell your services as a freelancer or a consultant, or you're thinking about starting up a little side gig or side product company, and you eventually need to sell that product or let's say courses to a customer. Well, I thought this was bad enough when I worked for companies and I tried to sell my ideas, but I found out it's even harder once I started trying to help random people on the internet. Well, today I'd like to help you break through communication barriers I see that a lot of programmers run into and a lot of people just in general tech positions. And if you watch this episode today, I think you're going to find some information that very few people have in the tech industry that aren't in, let's say, sales positions. And this will really help you overcome a lot of the things that a lot of other people in tech get stuck on. And if you actually learn this information and start to practice using it yourself, I hope it opens new doors for you. It helps you get better employment. If you already have a job, it helps you convince your coworkers and your managers. And if you're thinking about working on your own, it makes it much more likely that you'll be successful. Here at Healthy Software Developer, I like to talk about four things. Career progression, working healthy, finding meaning and purpose in your work, and escaping the corporate grind. This episode today is meant to help you escape the corporate grind. And I'm mostly targeting at if you're at the point in your career where you're considering working for yourself or starting a side gig or side hustle. If you don't learn how to sell your product or your services effectively to people, you're kind of dead no matter how great your product is. So the first thing that's really important to know before I even get into any of this is that in sales, someone who's considering buying your product is known as a prospect. You may have already heard this term before, but you're going to hear across the whole rest of this episode me refer to, you know, whether it's a manager, another developer, or a customer, and you're working for yourself, the person you're trying to convince or get to support you or buy your product as a prospect. I'm going to help you understand three different things in this episode. First, I'm going to help you understand how do you know how far along the journey to buying your idea someone is? This is something I never thought about until I started to go on YouTube and help you and help other people and had to learn a little bit about marketing. But this will really help you understand why am I not getting through to this person? Is there something I'm missing about the way they're looking at what I'm even offering them in the first place? Next, I'm going to go through helping you figure out how do you speak to your prospect? Again, another manager, programmer, a, a buyer of your services or your product. How do you speak to them in a way that they feel like you know their problem better than anyone else? And this is, again, a technique I learned through digital marketing, but it can super help you whether you're trying to market and sell your own software product or just trying to convince people of your ideas. And finally, I'll help you make sure, are you even selling your idea or product to the right person in the first place? Man, I learned this lesson the hard way on one of my startups that I'm going to talk about later. But you may be trying to convince someone of your value, and it's not really them that you have to win the support from. It's somebody totally else. So let's start by talking about how aware is your prospect, the other person you're talking to, of the problem. This is a very common model that you'll hear a lot of people in marketing use, but I started using this on my software projects after I started working for myself as a consultant. I started using this on my web pages where I offer career coaching. I've started using this in my YouTube videos. It's very subtle. You probably wouldn't even notice that I'm doing this, but this will super help you. 
if you're trying to sell yourself to other people. So there's four different levels of awareness that a prospect has of their problem. Let me run through them with you real quick. The first one is problem unaware. This is somebody who doesn't even know they have a problem. So if you try selling a solution to someone or giving someone a solution to their problem and they don't even understand how bad the problem is, you're not going to get very far. I've been in you know meetings with managers or given presentations to executives where I described the solution in a ton of detail and told them exactly you know how it's going to work, what it's going to do, how it's going to solve their problem. But I didn't understand at that time that they needed help just understanding what is my problem? You know, they didn't have an, a level of urgency in solving it. So if you're considering selling, you know, products or services, you're trying to sell your idea, you're trying to sell yourself, you're even in an, in an interview, you know, when you're talking to someone, the most important thing first is to try to figure out how aware are they of the real problem that I even solve through my product or my programming or my services. If they're not even aware, then actually the way that you sell your idea to them is you have to teach them about the problem. And a lot of my uh, mistakes I made, I'll be really honest with you, when I started this channel six years ago was, I would go on Reddit and I would go in Facebook groups and I would go in places where I knew other developers were and I would share my videos to help them with some of their mental health challenges and some of their, you know, uh, self-worth challenges and, you know, agile issues and a lot of the things I talk about on this channel. But the people there weren't even aware they had a problem yet. So they looked at it just like noise, like get the hell off of our subreddit, you know? I also had a lot to learn about uh, Reddit etiquette and I, I'm not a, a big Reddit user myself, but I hope you see my point, which is if you try selling your idea to someone who isn't even aware that they have a problem by telling them what the solution is, you've missed the mark. You need to back up and, and teach them, hey, here's what the problem is. Here's what it's costing you. Here's what's happening to you because you're not solving it. Help them really feel the pain for them to even care before you can offer what you do as a valuable solution to it. The second level of awareness that a prospect will have of the problem you're solving is problem aware. Here they do know they have a problem, they feel it all the time. They're experiencing it. They're very familiar with the problem. You know, maybe you're helping them, let's say as a developer with DevOps or something like that. And they know that the problem that they have is their developers and their operations people don't seem to work together very well. But when you're at the problem aware stage, when the prospect, the person you're talking to is at that stage, they know they have a problem, but they don't know the solution. You know, in the case of DevOps, finding ways to get developers and operations to work together better. It's not just technology. Sometimes it requires a reorg of just how people work together. But if you're talking to another person and they're very familiar with the problem, don't assume that they already know what the solution is and just start telling it to them. You have to also help them understand, here's potentially some ways you might think might be the solution. Because a lot of times, for example, when I talk to managers, let's say, and they'd be frustrated about the state of a project or feeling like you know things weren't being built fast enough, they would think, they know that they had a problem. Okay, we're not able to get our release out fast enough. But the, the solution they were looking for was work the developers harder or you know hire more people when a better solution might be to step back and figure out, are you trying to build too much before giving it to your customer? You know, Are the features that we're building as a software development team making a bunch of assumptions that they're all valuable? Is there a way that we can find that out earlier without building everything? So if you're dealing with a problem aware prospect, somebody who knows they have a problem, but they don't know the solution, the best way to kind of get through to them is you have to help them understand sort of the whole landscape of all the possible solutions before you start to pitch or explain your solution, which again, if you're an employee, this might be they're thinking about hiring you, they're thinking about giving you a promotion, and you have to help them understand you see all the other ways that they could, you know, they could promote someone else, they could hire another person who looks like they have more years of experience, but you have to help them understand why your solution is the best. And thirdly, there's solution aware. This is someone who 
It's, a, it's very close to the previous one, but they know they have a problem. They even know that there is a solution and they may even know what the best solution is, but they're trying to figure out who do I go with? You know, basically this is someone who is, you don't have to teach them what the problem is. You don't have to teach them what the possible solutions are. They've already made a decision. Now, one of the issues when someone's solution aware, I just talked about this, is their solution may not be you. It may not be what you're hoping that they choose as the solution. And in that case, you're going to have to convince them why your solution is better. But when you're talking to somebody who's solution aware, what's cool is you don't have to talk about the problem. You don't have to talk about whether there's a solution. You can spend all your time just helping them understand why you're basically the best person to solve their problem. And the fourth level of awareness that a prospect or somebody you're talking to might be at when you're trying to convince them to hire you or pay you or buy your product or service is ready to buy. And this is what we really want everybody to be at. But this is someone who knows they have a problem. They know there's a solution. They know what the possible solutions are. And now they're just, they've found you and they're looking at your solution and they're just trying to figure out, is your solution right for me? Am I really willing to buy? And this gets into things like, you know, you got to overcome their objections. Obviously, one of the biggest objections people will have is price. They don't want to pay enough money for it, let's say, to make it worth your time. Or maybe one of their objections is they don't think it's really going to work for them. And you have to help them understand why their situation is not so unique that this isn't going to work. It's work for other people like them. But if you're dealing with somebody who's at the ready to buy stage, there's tons of information on the internet. And I'll help you learn some of this in future episodes, but I'm not trying to be some sort of sales guru here. I'm just trying to help you with kind of basic level marketing and sales if you're thinking about either, again, escaping the corporate grind, working for yourself, or just convincing other people. But selling your idea to someone when they already know, hey, I'm just deciding is your idea, hiring you, buying your product, buying your course, hiring you as a coach, you know, whatever you're offering, am I okay with it? There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can use, not psychological tricks, but just tapping into the desires of the person, the emotions that they have behind the problem to really help make that sale. And if you're thinking of working for yourself, you're, you've are you maybe been in the industry for let's say seven to 20 years, and you're starting to wonder, you know, should I maybe quit working for corporate America and start working for myself? I have a career guide that's free. You can grab it. There's a link in the description. And in that guide, I talk about different stages that we all go through in our career and how you can kind of have some self-awareness yourself to know when you've gotten to the point that it probably makes the most sense to work for yourself or start a side gig or become a freelancer. Now, there's no hard or fast rules about this, but I think a lot of uh People and influencers and information is available online that tries to tell you, hey, just start a side company, you know, and make all this money instantly. And they're not really necessarily being honest and completely upfront with you about all the challenges you're going to run into if you're not fully prepared for it. And so, you know, I don't want to leave you with a feeling that that I'm not trying to encourage you, hey, if you do want to work for yourself or you do want to start a software product company, or again, you just want to get a promotion in your company that you shouldn't try to do it. But if you try to do it too early and then you fail, you know, it's going to set you back some time. It's going to be a bit of a, a, a hit to your ego. So check out that career guide and it'll give you a few things you can consider that'll hopefully help you feel more confident that yes, this is the right time to do it. So the second thing to talk about is how well do you know your prospect? When you're going to communicate with this person you're in, being interviewed by or a manager you're trying to convince an idea of or an architect you're trying to you know convince them that some technology or pattern you're going to use or a customer that's going to buy your product. The biggest thing I've learned you know in the last six years since becoming uh, an independent consultant because you know if you know my background I was a developer for various companies for 12 years then I did uh, consulting for 15 years after that is you got to be able to communicate with the person and define their problem really well and help them feel like you really understand them if you're going to sell your product or your service to them so let's talk real quick about how you can know that you really know how to communicate with the person in a way that you're going to get past any sort of like preconceptions or barriers they have and they know they're talking to the right person. So the first thing that you should know is some basic demographics. 
Is this person a man? Are they a woman? How many years have they worked in the industry? You know, what, how much money do they make? What kind of car do they drive? Now, a lot of the stuff uh, marketers will use, you're not necessarily going to know all of this if it's somebody, let's say, you work with. But if you're going to go into an important meeting, let's say with an executive or, you know, your director of engineering or even just another developer, the more you can know about, do they have a family? Do they have kids? You know, how long have they had a career? What are some of their sort of like hobbies and things like that? How old are they? You know, if you can figure out any of that information, then when you go to communicate your idea and you talk to them, you know who you're dealing with. And you know, the, if you're about to meet somebody that's significantly, let's say, older or younger than you, you tailor your communication differently. You know, if you've ever seen somebody talk to like a little child, I'm not an advocate of just like baby talk, which some people do, but you know, you're going to, you're going to use a vocabulary that's simpler, just like this. You know, if, if you're going to talk to someone who's, let's say quite a bit older than you, they may have a different view of technology and of business than you. And it's really useful to know that because then when you sell your idea to them or you try to convince them that they should hire you, you know what they value, you know, you know, what's different about them and what they're going to expect. The second thing that you can try to figure out that'll really help you convince someone, hey, I'm the right person to work with, or I have the right product for you to buy, is finding out what their industry specific demographics are. I touched on this a little bit in the previous point, but this is like knowing, you know, how many years of experience have they had, let's say, in the software industry, or if it's a manager, how many years have they been in management, or if it's a customer, you know, and you're selling, let's say, product to like, I don't know, physical therapists, like how many years have they practiced physical therapy? What's their job title? How much money do they make? Now, again, when you work at a company, it might be kind of hard to know how much money they make. You might have to go on Glassdoor. You might have to do some kind of guesswork. But if you know you're about to talk to someone who makes like, let's say, twice as much money as you, and you're worried about selling an idea, like a product to them, it's a low cost product. You might put all this effort into making sure that you've, you know, really convinced them that it's worth paying some paltry sum that to them is practically nothing anyway. And so price isn't something that you should be worried about. Similarly, if you're like selling some sort of software idea to an architect, for example, there's no sense in trying to convince them, you know, how great this, let's say, uh, monolith technology you want them to use is if they're, you know, hopped on the microservices bandwagon and, and, and that's what they really love. And that's the goals of their career. And they love using microservices. If you try to, you know, convince them that you're really great at or you want to use some, you know, again, monolith type technology. And I think both monoliths and microservices are great. Uh, architectures for the right problems. So don't hear me here wrong, but you're going to be much more effective by not trying to sell somebody something that they're not really open to buying from you in the first place. The more you understand their industry specific experience, what their goals are, who they are, you know, where they are along their journey of their career, or just in, in the market that you're trying to sell your idea to them in. And the third thing that a lot of people don't think about is the psychographic profile of the person. This can get kind of complicated, but this is things like, am I about to speak to someone who's high anxiety or are they calm? Am I about to speak to someone who makes very quick decisions and they don't want a lot of information, they want the minimum information, or am I about to speak to someone who needs a lot of details and a lot of facts to support their making a decision? Some people, I've especially learned this, you know, talking to executives, let's say, if you give them too much information, they won't support you because they honestly just don't even have time to consume all the information. So you have to upfront figure out, shoot, I thought there were 20 facts that helped me make this decision, but they're not even going to read the 20 facts. What are like the top three facts, let's say, that are the biggest impact to making this decision that I can communicate with them? And also knowing what's their risk aversion. Meaning some people, when they, let's say, trade on the stock market, they can see their value of the stock going up and down and up and down and up and down day to day. And they know how the stock market works. And they know that they need to look at that stock over a year or over six months and look at the average movement of the stock where there's other people who will flip out the, the moment that their stock goes down. They want to sell 
immediately. And so, you know, knowing the risk tolerance of the person that you're selling the idea to, I think that'll really help you figure out, am I trying to convince somebody of something that they need to support me on that might look risky to them? And they're really averse to risk. They hate risk. I'm probably not going to do a great job. I need to find a way to sell it to them that makes them feel comfortable, that it's actually a safe and a good bet. And then another thing is the frame of the person. Are they positively or negatively framed? You may have heard of this. I've had times when I'm in a meeting with someone and I'm trying to sell my idea to them or I'm trying to convince them to go with, let's say, one technology over another. And if they're negative framed, they're just thinking about, I want to make the decision that helps me avoid the most problems. They're thinking kind of negatively. It's, it's, you know, they're considering avoiding problems. And if I'm telling them all this stuff about, oh, it's going to let you do this and it's going to let you do that. And I'm telling them positive things, things that it's going to enable. It just doesn't connect with them. They don't seem to understand or care why it's important. But the flip side, if they're positively framed and they're like, I want to know what's in it for me. What new cool things am I going to get to do? But I keep talking to them about, you know, well, it's going to help you avoid this problem and this problem and this problem. It's going to go nowhere. So, you know, knowing the frame positively or negatively of the person that you're talking to, if you want to convince them or you want to get them to buy from you or you want to sell them your idea is really, really valuable. And it'll help you make sure you don't just get stuck and kind of kicked out of the whole process of selling your idea before you've even started. Now, finally, I promised earlier in the episode, I want to talk to you about how do you know that you're even selling to the right prospect? That might sound crazy, but I ran into this myself in the second startup that I tried to do with a, a coworker of mine where we co-founded a startup ourselves. We built the product. We talked to people who would use the product. We got a beta program going. All these people signed up across the United States. They started using the beta. They were super excited about it, only to find that the people who were going to use the product, and this is such a rookie mistake if you've never been an entrepreneur, but hey, this is how we learn, were not the people who had to actually sign the check and buy and pay for our product. It was actually someone a couple levels above the customer, the person that we were selling to. And we didn't really have a great message that we could give them, hey, take this to your boss's boss. Here's how they'll see the value in this so that they'll buy it. We really had had kind of centered all of our marketing message and the product features and everything around just what it was going to benefit to the, the end user, the person who was going to use it. So, you know, similarly, this may surprise you or not, a lot of my coaching clients are men, which probably isn't su surprising. The tech industry is, is still heavily, mostly men. And a lot of times I'll be meeting with someone and they'll be considering career coaching. And I have to remember one of the buyers, if it's a man and they're married, is their wife. Their wife needs to also be convinced, hey, I'm about to spend, you know, potentially over a thousand dollars on career coaching with this random dude, Jamie Edwards on the internet. Is the is this man's wife going to be confident that whatever outcome they're going to get from the coaching is not just going to help, you know, the, the client I'm talking to, but the wife, if she has any influence in the buying decision. So, you know, if you're considering selling a product or a service or your idea to someone and you're not getting through, make sure that you know who really signs the check, who's really paying, and make sure you give the person that you're talking to enough information that if it's not them, they can then sell it upstream to that person. You also need to know what's their budget. You know, often when I was brought into pre-sales conversations as a consultant, so I worked for a consultancy for 10 years and sometimes before we would start a software project, you know, I would be brought along to a client site where a salesperson, a technology, you know, services salesperson from the consultancy had already been talking to this company, telling them, hey, we can really help you with this problem. And then they would bring me in somewhat as a technical person so that if they had concerns around technology or they wanted to ask things, you know, that the salesperson didn't know, I could support them. And a lot of times I found that one of the mistakes that the company would make is they would just help them estimate and kind of figure out 
about how much they thought, you know, it was going to cost to build, but they didn't actually find out what their whole full budget is. And, you know, if you're trying to sell a product to somebody and you have no idea how much money they value it for, you can be selling the product or your idea for way less than it's worth. I mean, this happens classic all the time, right? In interviews, right? If you're, if you're talking to a recruiter or you're talking to a hiring manager or you're involved in any aspect of the interview process, getting a job, there's often a lot of pressure on you to be the first one to give the number, right? Well, here's how much I expect. And, and you've probably heard the advice and it's good advice. Never give out, you know, what you want for the position. Always force the company to volunteer what they're willing to pay for it. Because if it's, if it's too, if it's more than you expect, you're going to get a raise. If it's less than you expect, well, then you know you're wasting your time. And the third and final thing that's really important to understand to know, am I talking to the right person to try to sell my idea to or get them to hire me as a developer or consultant or get them to buy my product in the first place is how urgent is solving the problem? Man, I learned this the hard way when I first started doing career coaching. Uh, if you try selling a product or a service to someone and they do have the problem, they, you know, I talked about the levels of problem awareness earlier in the episode. So they, they know they have a problem. They know there's a solution. They're looking for solutions and they find you and you're a possible solution. But the problem doesn't really bother them that much. It's like, yeah, it'd be kind of nice to solve this problem or yeah, it'd be nice to bring another developer onto the team. But, you know, we're not that far behind. So we'll, I'll just talk to some people and see if someone wants to take the job. Maybe if someone really impresses me, then we'll hire them. But otherwise, I mean, the team, you know, they're not that far behind. I mean, if that was like how a hiring manager was looking at the interviewing process and talking to you, you're going to have a really hard time getting the job and selling yourself because the problem isn't urgent to them. It's not painful enough, you know, and similarly, if you built a little side software project, you know, again, as a side gig, because you eventually want to quit working for corporate America and you come up with a cool idea and it's, you know, a product that solves a real problem, but that problem isn't really painful enough to your market that they're willing to put their hard earned dollars down and that they're willing to actually move forward. You know, again, I've run into this myself in several different ways, my startups, as well as when I first started career coaching. No matter what you do, you can have the best sales material, an awesome product, explain it the best, you know, again, have all the, the demographics about the person you're talking to, know what level of awareness they are, and they're not going to ultimately, you know, pay the money or close the deal. So have you ever had a hard time selling your idea, your product, or your service to someone else in the tech industry? What are some things you've tried to do to do this? When have you seen it go wrong? Did some of these strategies help? I sure hope so. Until next time, leave me some comments. Thanks.